All right, guys, welcome to a little episode I've been wanting to do. I've been getting some requests, and uh, I'm going to do a boat walk-around tour since I spent too much money at the Sportsman Expo yesterday, and I didn't get a chance to go fishing today. This is my boat. I'm sure you've seen it on the channel. It's a uh, 185 Thunderjet Explorer. So I'm going to give you just some rundown on it, uh, my review of it as well. I bought it brand new in 2017. It is a 2017 model. It's a half hard top. So I got the front part as canvas. The rest of it is a, is a hard top. And then I have a drop curtains in the back. But uh, we'll start up front and then kind of work our way around. I installed the Minkota Altera 24 volt, 80 pound thrust, 60 inch shaft uh, trolling motor, bow mounted trolling motor on a quick release. It does have a anchor roller and a jam cleat here welded on from the factory brand new it's uh got an easy loader trailer uh added the spare tire it's always a good idea swing tongue surge brakes so it does have surge hydraulic brakes they're disc just working our way around here i did install a, a charging receptacle for the onboard battery charger right here in the front so you just plug your extension cord in there when you get home from fishing keeps your batteries maintained and charged at all times Fuel, it's got a 42 gallon fuel tank. So it's plenty of fuel, lasts you quite a while. Depends on how far you're traveling, but you can make pretty big moves in this boat. I say it's the, it's the half hard top. So I have sliding side windows. The front canvas can come off. Uh, it's got the uh, welded in net holder down the side, which is always nice to have the net readily available. Uh, easy to just grab in and out. It is a single axle trailer. It is about the biggest boat you would ever want to put on a single axle trailer. Um, it just came with one. Sometimes I wish it did have a tandem, but it is more maneuverable in and out of my side yard here with the single axle. So I'm actually kind of like it. It's got the, uh, the chine guides, which are real nice to help loading uh, in the current in the river. I do have two Canon Magnum 10 electric downriggers, really like these. I do, uh, I like Scotty and Cannon, but I chose Cannon. I have another video talking about why I did that. So yeah, that does have the, the welded mounts. I got the, uh, the railing around the side on the, uh, on the inboard side, which makes it a little nicer. Something you may not think about when you're ordering your boat. If they offer the railing on the inside, I would put it there. It allows you to lean up against it when you're inside, especially in rougher water, the ocean or the bay. Uh, gives you more stability than having the rail on the outside of the gunnel. Uh, so that's something to think about when you're doing it. I do have the wash down uh, on board. So that makes it nice. Going around back, we got our two motors. We have the 99 Pro Kicker from Mercury and the uh, the Merc 150 four-stroke. Both great motors. I've had zero problems with either one of these. Merc has had a little bit of an issue with their oil sumps on some of the 150s, but you'll know that right away and it'll be under warranty um, if that does happen. Uh, right now, the, the kicker motor is tie bar to, uh, to the main motor. One of my uh, future upgrades I'm gonna do here soon, hopefully, is get the Panther steer and the Pro Troll 3 set up so I'll have throttle and steering control over the kicker independently. Right now I pretty much lock this kicker in straight, set my speed, and then I use the bow mounted uh, Altera to steer and keep my course or uh, eye pilot, heading lock, all that kind of stuff is how I'm able to stand in the back of the boat all the time and maneuver the boat, catch fish, and be kind of worry free. Uh, but on long trips, when the electric motor goes out, eventually um, camping and whatnot, it does um, suck to have to sit at the steering wheel all the time and not be able to be in the back fishing. So I am gonna get the uh, Panther steer and the Pro Troll for that. A lot of guys will do a TR1 system or the new Garmin Reactor 40, but I use my bow mount more than anything. It gives you more control of the boat using your electric steer trolling motor on the bow as a bow thruster, um, basically with a, with a tracking feature with the GPS. So you're able to keep control of the boat a lot better that way. Basically the big motor is just for running uh, wide open 
and uh, getting away from the dock, running wide open and getting to your spot and either anchoring up or start trolling. So that's what it's got. Keep slow hours on your big motor, uh, which is saves you on gas and your pocketbook and maintenance. Um, the bigger, bigger motors are not for trolling with. So get yourself a kicker or a bow mount. So we'll kind of move up inside the boat now. Um, I do have a boarding ladder on the other side, but we'll climb up here. So yeah, with the cannons, I do have the uh, flush mount plugs um, on both sides uh, for doing that and the swivel bases here. I got the uh, Scotty rod holders, you know, the orcas that I've talked about before. And then uh, I do have a barbecue that I can swap out and it fits on any of these Scotty rod holders. There you go cook out it's hanging out over the back so you can still be fishing and grilling it's the way to go uh, it's got a large uh, live well here plenty big bleeding out the fish it's really not a live well it's where the fish go to bleed out I am gonna be adding a I, I have a homemade bait tank for uh, live bait for anchovies and stuff in the bay when I go uh, that I made, it hooks up to my wash down pump, but I am going to be converting. This boat does have a forward live well in the bow. I don't use it. I use it as anchor storage and rope storage. I'm going to be converting the pump for that one into a uh, pump for the bait tank, which I'm going to mount on the back deck. Uh, this boat is 18 and a half feet to the transom here. It's 20 foot, 10 inches overall. Um, it's almost 21 feet. Smaller than it looks. Uh, a lot of people think it's a lot larger than it is, but uh, it's a it's a nice boat, good size for the ocean. I mean, it's not an everyday ocean boat, but it, you can take it to the ocean. Just pick your right day. Uh, bay does great. Rivers, Delta, perfect. Uh, and lakes is absolutely perfect boat. So if that's more what you're into, this would be a boat for you, a good boat for you. It's got the side rod holders in here. I do have a uh, hard top mounted four rod holders here, the rear spotlight for lighting up here in the, uh, in the dark. And then I have the side cab. There's also hard mounted uh, rod holders there. I'd say there's a full drop canvas in the back. The center curtain drops down and we'll go inside. First off, since it's getting dark out, we ran a little late. We are trying to edit the other video, but uh, we do have interior lighting, two LED strips overhead, and then there's four blue color matched LEDs, two in the bow and two in the stern there. So it, it does light up in here really nice. You can also turn off the overheads and just have the lower ones on. Um, two controls, forward one being your main motor. Your rear one would be the uh, the kicker. And then I do run Lowrance products as far as electronics. I'm a Minn Kota trolling motor guy and a Lowrance electronics guy. Those are personal preferences. Lots of people have, you know, their favorites, but those are mine. So I have, right now I'm running a Lowrance Elite Ti with a total scan. It's only a seven inch screen on a RAM mount. I am going to be adding radar soon, so I am going to be getting an HDS, probably an HDS 9 live, and uh, with the active 3-in-1 transducer, it allows me to network and add the uh, the radar on top of the, the cab. I just installed uh, one of my last videos, the Lowrance Link 6S uh, VHF marine radio, so that's working great, and, uh, and then the Shakespeare uh, antenna on the side. So one thing I wish uh, I had known about when I bought the boat, uh, how important it would be. It only came with one, the driver's side wiper. I am going to add the passenger wiper. So if you're planning on ordering one, just go ahead and order it with that passenger wiper. You're not going to regret it. You're going to want that. I have two onboard chargers. I have one here, that I'd say with the re receptacle for the uh, trolling motor batteries. And then I have another one in the back for the two uh, batteries for the boat, one being the crank battery and one being the house battery on the battery switch. I'll show you that also. I keep my tackle boxes up underneath both sides here. There's one. This is a Minkota alternator charger down here. This takes 
excess voltage from the uh, alternator on the main engine, the 150, and then boosts it and charges my two trolling motor batteries in here. Uh, I outfitted this uh, step box here that comes with the boat. I converted that into uh, battery storage for my trolling motor batteries. So there's two Group 31 batteries in there, deep cycles. Those are wired in series and gives you 24 volts. If you have any questions about that, I have other videos. You can check out my battery wiring videos. And then the other side, I have the Minn Kota Digital, two bank digital onboard battery charger. Works great. I have zero issues with them. I say two side uh, top cab storage trays. The uh, the backs of the seats come off and uh, make a make a bed with a bed rail kit that I have, so we can sleep out here. We do go to the Delta, which I don't do much night fishing anymore. I'm just too old for that, I guess. I don't know. I can't stay up, but uh, I am gonna have to try. I hear that's the way to do it, to catch sturgeon sometimes, so. So I do have, like say, a uh, battery selector switch over here. Allows you to select between the crank battery, which I have here. There's a crank battery. Just the factory one that came with the boat. Still good. And then here's my Group 27 Deep Cycle house battery. What I would use to run the boat, run all these lights if we were out on the... Uh, the delta at night fishing or you know what have you if you're going to be staying out long or if that one happened to take a crap on us i would be able to jump over and switch to that one and start the engine so yeah and i have an onboard battery charger for that also which that one just has a plug-in sitting right here that i that i plug in i do like this boat um it's a great boat it's the only boat you really do need um only thing is with aluminum boats, going to the ocean, going to the bay a lot, you do get beat up a little bit more. So if you do a lot of ocean and bay fishing, they're great. Um, just get the full suspension seats, which is something that we're gonna upgrade to. I have shock absorbing seat posts, but uh, I am gonna get the full suspension seats that are adjustable tension. It'd be a little bit softer ride in the, in the bay. And also in hindsight, I would have went with a three quarter hard top and not had the front canvas. I don't take it off. So uh, just having the full, the full front hard instead of the canvas would be a lot better, especially for the bay and just spray. I mean, you'd, I never have taken that canvas off maybe once or twice. And every time I did, I got a wicked sunburn and I wish I just left it on. You can leave the door open and open the windows and there's plenty of air movement. So in hindsight, I would have got a three quarter hard top instead of a half, but some things you don't know until you buy something. Hopefully that's why you're watching this. Maybe you get a review. So those are some of the other things. Uh, oh, another thing you wanna make sure you get, hydraulic steering. I bought this boat, it had cable steering. It was something that I knew was going to have to be upgraded. My cable locked up within the first year. So I switched to hydraulic steering. And then I also really, really recommend you get trim tabs. Um, this boat will porpoise quite a bit without trim tabs. So I am going to be putting trim tabs on here soon. I have most of all the stuff needed to install it. I just have to get the dash controller switch. I'm going to be buying that here soon. I'll do a video on how to install those trim tabs. I got Linco trim tabs. Um, I'm gonna put those on here. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's that's my boat. It's a Thunderjet 185 Explore, Explorer. Its name is the Real Life. And I'm the Real Life Fisherman. So I'll go in later how Real Life came about, but let me tell you the channel is just about keeping it real. I'm a normal guy. I'm just out fishing on the weekends. I have, you know, 40 hour week job plus, you know, especially in the summertime, I'm a boat mechanic. So I work long hours, do a lot of hard work and fishing is a hobby for me. I'm not a professional. There's some areas of fishing I'm more experienced at than others. And this channel is about me sharing those experiences with you and learning from you, you learning from me, 
um, and just sharing our experiences out on the water fishing and also uh, some boat how-tos and, and, uh, and service work and all that kind of stuff. Maintenance on your, on your motors, we're gonna do that. I do a lot of electronics installs. That's kind of my area of expertise is uh, marine electronics, trolling motors, fish finders, radios, radars, networking, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I really enjoy that work. So that's what I do a lot of. So if you have any questions, always feel free to ask. I am real good about responding to people. If I haven't responded to you, it's either I'm busy at work or doing something else and I will try to respond to you as soon as I see your question or comment. I, I like to respond to comments and uh, you know get to know you guys um, as best I can over the internet. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the channel. I hope you like the boat. It may be around a while. I'm thinking it's probably gonna have to. I mean, we're not looking to get a new boat anytime soon. I'm happy with the purchase. There's days that I do wish this thing was just a little bigger, but then there's days I'm happy it's not, you know, because I'd say it's a tighter fit and it's heavier to tow, more gas, yada, 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 more payment. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you out on the water.